Okay, and just a reminder that if you go to the very top of my page and go to the link, that this is free, that this paper doesn't cost anything. You can click on the link that says PDF. I guess if you're on a cell phone, you have to scroll probably several pages like really far down in order to find the link to open up the actual paper. But, you know, it's been a month now and since it's been published. And yeah, it'd be great if you guys could share it and read it because it definitely settles in my opinion that there's no apparent likeness. You just go to page three and they talk about Ronald and Locke Mackay, a picture that was found on a locket, and the similarity of the person depicted on this image here. It, it just isn't apparent. There's no apparent similarity between the, that and Joseph Smith and his face, which they've been studying. It's 2023 since 2019. And they're forensic anthropologists, scientists, uh, but they identify people on, in CCTV cameras. Like it's a whole science in identifying people. And I know people disagree on some things here and there, but um, you can read that and see that they definitely could not find any differences that couldn't be explained by the mask sitting on the face. Whereas there just wasn't much, any, they're like there just isn't a likeness there between this guy and that there's just, I, I could point out like 50 things and I have before and people are like, but if I take lines, you know, just... anyway, um, you know, and any, I guess anyone from the same area of the world is going to look almost at least maybe 90% similar to each other. They're going to look extremely similar. So... But yeah, I kind of pulled this up because I remember showing this to my mom. She's like, the head looks so big. This is an example of, do you see the camera distortion? How the canvas, like the camera is really high up, angling down. Like if it was flat on the floor, that's how you take a good picture of a painting you're wanting to sell without it looking distorted. And so what I'm going to kind of talk about is that there are a lot of these different photos of the painting, probably done with different lenses, different angles causing some distortion but if you watch my video right here you can see me sketch every detail on the forward facing painting and then the carter image and library of congress so it's very clear especially if you just go right there just me quick shot i can see that the carter image looks wider whereas the library of congress looks like a smashed barbie doll head like it's just really narrow if that's you know, Janie Robinson, I guess, took a photo of the painting and then what the you can just go through the whole timeline. Um, but yeah, you can go through this whole video and see, okay, there I've sketched the David Rogers painting onto here. And each time the shadows are exactly the same and all these things that are not accurate. So Carter's image was the best match to the painting. But the painting... Okay, and there's the Library of Congress to the painting. And you can see Library of Congress, the eyes are closer together than the painting. But then just the painting onto the death mask, you can tell like, well, there's his tear duct, there's the tear duct. Like it, the eyes are too close together in the painting. His eyes are farther apart. Um, the mouth was quite good, right? You can see the mouth lining up there. There are a lot of things that are pretty good about the painting. I mean, it, it was of Joseph Smith. But yeah, you can see this right there, whereas you can see his eye. His, there's the tear duct, there's the tear duct. It's hard to tell, but I've looked at this so much, I know that. And the shape of the eyebrows are really different, where you can see this shape of the eyebrow. But this does follow along the bottom part of the eyebrow pretty well. And you see how this sort of more comes up, that goes down. That's consistent in all the photos of the painting. Um, and something I just kind of threw on here. I I like looking at these copies that Carter did. And so this is 
I don't put that on the page life drawings of Joseph Smith or anything because it's, um, well, it's not from life, right? It says it's copied from the daguerreotype. 1843, daguerreotype taken. So they're, they're making it very clear that Carter believes there was a daguerreotype taking of Joseph Smith before he died. Um, but it clearly the word copying is a sketch and it's just art. This is copying the painting. And then we'll go into more of the history. Um, but it, I find it so interesting that this is an oval cut in all of these that Carter does with the sketches of the daguerreotype. So it makes you think the daguerreotype must have been an oval. Or as Daniel Larson makes, uh, I mean, Locke Mackay and Ronald Romig write about, oh, well, here's this picture. And then there's a picture they think is Lucy Mack Smith. And I'm like, with black hair and President Monson's long nose. If you look at uh, Maudsley and Frederick Piercy drew her from a really, really good detailed drawing of her a year before she died. Her nose didn't look anything like that. And then in paintings from 1842, so she died in the 1850s. In 1842, her hair was white. You can see it. She has a very sheer shawl on, but you can see her white hair underneath. Whereas this daguerreotype of Lucy Maximith is, this one has black hair. Kind of like, well, I think Emma, like she kept her, her hair stayed black up until her, I didn't see any pictures where she looked like her hair went white. I mean, I'm sure there was some gray, but with black and white pictures, it pretty much still just looked black. Still looks dark. I can look up Emma Smith photo. Here's a very elderly Emma Smith. See her hair looks still really dark. And she's a knockout compared to that woman that you know they think is Lucy. I'm sorry. And, and Lucy Mac Smith just looks so kind and sweet in Frederick Piercy's sketch. But my mom's just like, oh, just look at the expression of, and he, she just looks so sweet and kind in the sketch that Frederick Piercy has. But anyway, you can watch my video about that. Anyway, um, ovals seem to be what Lucy and, like, there's my picture, is an oval cut. And that seemed to be, other than it just not matching J.S. Bibbins' own photography and high contrast and how it was photographed, different lighting, different background, very likely a different photographer took the original photo and GS Bibbins just copied it. Okay, so then you can read through this and see it appears to be a copy of an earlier photographic portrait, likely a daguerreotype or amber type, whatever. And um, I wasn't begging him or paying him to say that. Like I was shocked. I'm like, oh, because here's the comparison. Here's Bivens' own photography, which is totally different background, different lighting, different quality, even lighting, side lighting, really good quality, really high con contrast and loss of detail, right? And then these are believed to be possibly be. Um, in the church history library, they, they believe it's the 1840s. But when you look at the daguerreotype case of uh, Marcena Cannon, later years, like 1850s, his cases looked like this. So I don't think that Lucian Foster had that. I don't think this even existed in the 1840s. Whereas this picture that we believe is of Emma Smith, which I want to kind of touch on real, real quick here, but you can see that it's that same speckled just sort of boring but rough look and um and so i i didn't get the copy of like there was a copy of the paper and i said oh we need to make sure that we say this is courtesy of community christ and this is john how did you check i don't know how to say his name i still don't know how to say his name um and it got flipped around so i'm just letting you guys know that but i think evidence is still look at the matting right there right there and then i found a whole website was trying to say that this picture of emma smith was grandma emma smith holding a baby grandson well i just showed you pictures of emma smith as an elderly woman as a grandma she she aged really quick and um 
There's a grandma, Emma Smith. That, that's not a grandma, especially because Julia Murdoch Smith wrote Mrs. Joseph Smith and son Dave born three months after his father was killed. So none of the grandchildren would be sitting in her lap and be descendant of a father that was killed. But her son, David Hiram Smith, was born in November and his father was killed June 27th. So I guess you could round up July, August, September, October, November. Four months. She was just sort of really more roughly four, three months, but she put three months there. Um, yeah, just very traumatic. So she's just showing like, this is my mother bereaved. She's very sad. You know, this is, she's writing down details. And she was there. She was, I think, a 13-year-old girl, 1844. She was born in 1831, a year before Joseph Smith III was. So, anyway. So this same rough, textured, oval shape. So um, Wilfred Woodruff wrote that Lucian Foster took his daguerreotype. Not that many people wrote down these details. And... And there isn't a stamp saying who took this photo. But when you look at this, especially this particular one, it looks like it's a draped background too. And then she looks like there's a lamp on the table. So it explains the dramatic side lighting that you do see in my picture. And you can kind of see that with Emma's. Hers looks almost pretty even, but there seems to be more lighting coming from the opposite side which more implies that this is in the correct perspective too, because this is a perfect exact copy of just the daguerreotype. Um, are the lights coming from there, are lights coming from there? But interestingly enough, the backgrounds are draped and on both, hers is so clear, so, so clear. It looks uneven too. And you just think of how much taller he was than her. I tried lining up, I even made this lower. So this should be higher, so he's probably, like he's really, really tall. Um, and then Wilfred Woodruff wasn't super tall, but he's still quite a bit taller. Or she's probably a little bit shorter and she's leaning. So it's, it just, everything's explained by looking at Lucian Foster's work. And then the forward facing painting, someone um, I've had, you know, people talk, try to talk to me about Kim Marshall's picture, and I've talked about it before, and I just didn't have the heart to explain why. I have a whole video debunking her picture as a real photo of a man. I have many videos debunking that the Carter image, or this is the Library Congress picture, you can go here. Even they state that it's a copy of a drawing or painting. And the credit goes to W.B. Carson. But... If you go right here, this is the paper that, this is the Saints Herald. And this is 1879. So Joseph Smith III, if you watch my videos, I just, I know. Like I have some facts memorized. Ooh, scary. Um, I've been having to deal with a lot of stuff in my life. If there's a reason I went ahead and threw in about 11 minutes into my video about a photograph of Joseph Smith trying to explain as I, you know, a lot of people talk about spiritual experiences and I'm on my vlogging part. I do talk about um, something, a spiritual experience. I don't know. Like I definitely, I believe in angels, right? Um, but to me, that experience helped, I think, prepare me to not be swayed by someone that did believe in what Chandler and Dable believed and was stalking me in for years and trying to convince me and trying to tell me, oh, I believe this, and just kept kept emailing and emailing. And, and then they got, anyway, it just, definitely a lot of love bombing. I think they really just wanted money. They kind of wanted my photo. And you just, I don't trust people that are part of that group. And so then, Pig, piggybacking on finding out who that person was and having the cops talk to them. I, um, you just don't know. There's just so many people that believe some of the tenets of similar things that Chad and Larry Dable do, and you just don't know what led to the worst. You know, it just, I've made a video last summer where I'm just remembering 
when Julie Rose book, like I haven't, I don't know where, or who everything came from. Is it from these preparing the people from these home? I, it seems like from interviews, a lot of it came from their meetings, like family home evenings in homes, but just the people that believed what Julie Rowe taught or whatever, whatever, whatever. They were meeting in groups, but they were, I guess, didn't have a canonized belief, but clearly Chad was creating canonized belief. And according to, um, you know, East Idaho News, Nate Eaton, he's, oh, it made me so mad. I was watching him being interviewed by that Southern true crime lady and she just started yelling at him, but he was starting to say like, he, he was really saying just a few months ago that a lot of people still believe Chad is like a prophet, you know, and you just, you, you would think people don't believe in those things anywhere, but you just don't know. And it's shocking if anyone believes in any degree of anything like intensity and stuff. How much more do they believe? And so I had someone, I'll just say, uh, accused me of believing in zombies because I said I was scared of someone that was just sort of acting weird and going into a trance. Well, it turns out someone that knew them said that they have DID or multiple per- said multiple personality disorder. So that was their opinion or their statement, not mine. And so I tried to say, hey, well, that's what that was. But they just still like people want to, will believe what they want to believe. But there's just a lot of lies coming from a couple sources of people that just, it was just like, how did this happen? You know? And I'm like, wait a minute, dude, do that. Um, you know, I, I have a video from November 8th, 2022, where I state in an hour long video how I don't believe in these weird ideologies and how they're a little bit scary. And I'd already talked about it in this summer and then I talked about it in 2020. So I show those ex- excerpts to be like, hey, those people that I just, it's just things get twisted. So they're twisted. They try to accuse and say that four days after that video, I went 180 degrees for my video. And then people just don't understand when you've, I guess I've done a lot of acting. Maybe it's how I grew up. Sometimes I will talk and say, and then I will switch my voice and imitate someone. So I'll be telling a story. I like to tell stories and describe I'll show you that person's facial expression. I will change my voice to be like that person because that's how my brother and sister were and my family, like they're just theater kids. You just imitate people. And so as I'm talking about these girls in Salt Lake City, I get a little sarcastic and it's, I guess it's not that I think it's funny because I genuinely am scared looking back that these girls at church were pointing at people saying light and dark. And they said, Oh, I change my voice as if I'm speaking as them saying, Oh, you're dark. You should do it. Obviously that's not me saying that when I go, you're dark, you should do it. You know, like I'm joking. I don't think anyone is dark and should die. And if I think someone acts like they're in a trance, I think they are. Like, I don't think you don't twist my words and say, I said zombie when I said trance. And then literally in the DSM of DID is they go into a trance like state. And I just, I never want to have any communication with that person ever again. There's been quite a few people I've said in the last year, last summer, you know, I've just like, okay, I don't talk to me, but there's someone really trying to push these beliefs on me. And I think, so I got into detail about that spiritual experience because I wanted it to come from me as opposed to all this stuff coming from a couple of people that just didn't even know me any significant amount of time didn't let me defend myself didn't let me explain anything and just somehow just I just can't believe what happened so it's just been through absolute hell the last two months so it's just like uh no four days later I didn't suddenly go oh I think that now you know so I'm like come on people you know it just really really disturbing so I just felt good about sharing that but I also felt good about sharing um an experience I had that isn't um I mean I, I've just you, you're just told to keep things private but since I know this person I just had some I thought they were my friend I really really thought this person was my friend and I could trust them and I couldn't and it's just sad you know, and then I know, 100% know the, any word that came out of my mouth, they were sharing, 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 and twisting and twisting and twisting, and uh, but not trying to rectify or ask me, oh, did you mean this? <laughs> yeah. 
wait, did I hear you wrong? None of that, right? So um, I'm like, but what if I have witnesses and evidence that you heard me wrong? Well, th those people will continue to de defend me and say, no, Tabby didn't say that, right? But it's, it's really horrifying, obviously, if you twist those exact words and say, no, you said that you do believe this. Uh -huh. You know, it just, no, I didn't. Okay. So what's this? The Saints Herald. Joseph Smith III moved to Plano, Kendall County, Illinois, to be the editor, the head editor. And he was the prophet. So this is the newspaper for the reorganized church. He's the editor of the Saints Herald. And so this was published. You can see the exact date here, August 15th, 1879. And he is talking about, and you can read the whole thing there. He's saying that he's selling photos of the front view painting of his father. And his dad was 36 at the time, so it can't be William Major. And it remained in Emma's possession. And many stated that she would refuse to let it be copied. So why would he find a daguerreotype of just the painting? and not really and think it's real and for it to be this so that was the theory that came out last summer but how different does it look than this like no it just it doesn't he's already selling copies of this you, you think really six years later he just got really stupid basically is the story i'm like i don't think so you guys and so then you've got junius f wells I have him quoted in two parts, but it's he's rem, he's talking real time 1885 here, whereas the earlier one he's telling his mission story. Okay, it was me. I'm the one that met with Emma Smith. Here's what happened two three years before she died. Okay, but then here's this where they're talking about um, right right down here. Sorry, August, and Joseph Smith the third was there. Um, in Utah, in 1885, it's just so nice, all these people that were like, I loved your research on all the, your website and everything, I'm just going to use it, you know. Uh, so that happened, and anyway, so you can go to that, and, and you can see they sound a little bit confused. You can click on this and actually read. It takes a few seconds for it to load. So don't start clicking on things as I was about to do. I think it's like right here. Yep, it's right there. Really short, like two paragraphs and saying Carter's taken photographic copies of the daguerreotype. He's gonna have it touched up until Pictures as true to nature as possible. And so they're saying C.W. Carter is in possession of a daguerreotype of Joseph Smith from 1843 before he died. Um, was he, wasn't he? Was he just in possession of this? Probably. So as I showed at the top, that sketch by um, Dan Wuggelin, it, it just looks like almost an exact copy of this. Except the hairstyle is a little bit different. The thing, one thing I do find different is all these sketches. The hair is parted and combed over. Um, and he has ears. <laughs> and, and, and in some of the sketches, his ears stick out. So you can... So this is August 15th, 1879. Okay, so there's August 1879, and then, yeah, six years later. He's, he's still selling photos of the painting, but they've been touched up. Well, then Carter's own copy is touched up the exact same way, so I don't think Joseph Smith III is stupid. Um, and so here you can just read the excerpt of it. To carry Tarpor for the prophet, 843, within a year of his death, the old acquaintances of illustrious man of whom pronounce an excellent likeness. If it was a if they thought it was a real photo of a man, well, it would look at of course it's an excellent likeness, right? Likeness and judgment of how and trying to 
touching it up until it looks as true to nature, things like that. They're trying to make a painting look real, like a real photo. Does that make sense? And then October, Junius FL says, oh, no, 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 I saw the painting. That's just of the painting. And I, I um, know this story of David Rogers. And Emma said the painting wasn't even that good. It says it's a pretty good likeness of a silly boy. And they're making engravings. And, and so he's saying, but this is also a part to be a daguerreotype. As far as we can discover, diligent inquiry, no such portrait was ever taken. We fully satisfied ourselves that the original daguerreotype is the same that of Mrs. Toulouse. It's just a copy of the painting, which is taken from the oil painting of Joseph Smith which Emma kept in her room, refused in her lifetime to have it copied. So, so she didn't let it be copied. She didn't let someone trace it. She didn't let someone take a photo of it. So how would there be a daguerreotype of it that Joseph Smith III found and forgot and thought it was a real, if it wasn't taken until she died in 1879 and six years later he forgot and thought it was a real photo. Like there's just the logic of that from that's one i'm sorry if that sounds really mean but i'm like no you guys <sighs> pretty good likeness of a silly boy and, and they'd asked emma like she's like no his countenance is always changing it doesn't really look like him and so carter he touched up a daguerreotype of david rogers 1842 painting and sold it and really there were a lot of paper photos of it right the library of congress is it's a paper photo um Like you know, the, the Joseph Smith papers states it was by David Rogers. This is from Life, 1842. And it's so funny, you can even go here and see. Well, his hairline looks really different. And this is June, 1842, than it did in September, 1842. So there was some artistic liberties taken. It's, I changed some stuff. And then 1899, this painting that was already finished was donated to the Iowa Historical Society. This is the duplicate oil painting, which you look at it, it shows the step deformity. It shows the side of the mouth dripping down. Again, whereas the locket photo, it you don't see that eye. Like literally they broke the bones according to, um, Sorry, to the study done in 1995. The maxillofacial surgeon, my brain now, and I've had like almost no sleep this week, but um, yeah, so anyway, that was spearheaded by Shannon Michael Tracy. Yeah, my brain is just, I'll, I'll pull it up on my page, but I'll, I'll just pull it up. Let's just go down here. <laughs> You see it in that painting, but you don't see it in the other forward facing painting. And then in the 1910 letter, he states, and so, and you do see that if you go like this, like this is about as level, the nose is level, right? His left eye is lower than his right. Okay, and they see that it's really clear here when you look at the skull that this, the entire orbital bone has dropped down. And you can watch my video, so it says Dr. Niles Herod and Dr. Van de Graaff, they're both, Dr. Van de Graaff was an anatomist at BYU and wrote books on anatomy. And you got Curtis Weaver saying he ignored basics of anatomy and they didn't know they were talking about, but he's a linguist and he studied a book on and off for two years and he's gonna do a better job. I don't think he did, sorry, if that sounds really mean. And he sort of is the photo analyst of Utah of all alleged photos of Joseph Smith. So it just, it's hard, but you can just read. Step to Forney of, of the left side, Goman. So when you look that up, you can see people and see that their whole eye that has been damaged is just lower. The actual eye socket is lower. So it just, it crushes everything and so and again, even then, if you're trying to figure out which skull is whose, well, people weren't really beating up Hiram Smith as much. And Joseph was really getting beat up, but Hiram wasn't mobbed in 1832. He wasn't beat up by the brother. 
you know, they, they were abused in 1838, and there's not a lot of detail on that, but I did hear him state that they were in a crowd of people and were, you know, abused in some way. So, um, I don't know. So, you can read all this, and I got permission from Shannon Michael Tracy, so it was really great. Some people were talking to me, but then I told people we published a paper, and then nothing. So people are just really totally dead silent, and it's just, and I'm also going through weird things with some people. I'm like, why is this happening? Through this, and I've talked about that before. But anyway, I was really trying to focus on the timeline because someone was talking about Kim Marshall's painting and I'm not going to redo this, but basically most of the photos of the painting, not this one. See, this is, this is the duplicate oil painting. So it shows the step deformity that Dr. Niles Harrod and Van de Graaff, I wanted to give them credit and say their names. So I made you all dizzy there, but he... Anyway, it's in the first paragraph that I have here. He's saying, yeah, Ramsey, I, I, don't, I don't like his painting so much. I don't like it so much. You know, go check out the duplicate oil painting. He's like, look at that one. And he's like, well, you can see the authentic one. Um, it was painted by the same artist that painted my uncle Hir and Hiram Smith, who's a form of the basis. Well, who also painted Hiram Smith was David Rogers. And you can find the links to that right here. And so somehow Brigham Young did end up with these profile paintings that is said to be by David Rogers, according to newspaper articles and um, the profiles of Joseph and Hiram. And then you do see in these journal entry with David Rogers at home. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're skip, but Monday, Tuesday, four days. He spent the painting. The painting was from life. You don't spend four days sitting for a painting, watching someone holding your daguerreotype and painting it while you sit there. Eh. And the outfit is exactly the same in the profile painting. So you can sort of see here's this outfit. Look at the outfit that he's wearing. And then if you look at the profile painting right here, it's the same outfit. And his hair is popped up kind of high, but it's not brushed back and teased and bouffant. It's receded pretty far back. Um, people like to ignore that. But you can see that there's a lot of, not very much hair on the side of his head right there. But I know the church history department hates that uh, my Joseph Smith is bald. That's just, they went on and on and on about that stuff. So I had no headway in 2017. And, um, you know, they're very judgmental of bald people. And that's just where I'll end it. Wasn't it the story of Paul? No, who was it? What prophet that they were making fun of and calling him bald? And then a bunch of bears ate him. What story was that? I don't know. Anyway, have a good day.